Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 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 Assalamu alaikum Acha ji, kya program hai? Zishan Akbar Talawat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullah. The translation for the verses recited before you is as follows. I seek refuge in Allah from Satan, the accursed, in the name of Allah, the gracious, ever merciful. Verily, Allah enjoins justice and the doing of good to others and giving like kindred and forbids indecency and manifest evil and wrongful transgression. He admonished you that you may take heed and fulfill the covenant of Allah when you have made and break not the oaths after making them firm while you have made Allah your surety. Certainly, Allah knows what you do. Surah Al-Nahl verses 91 and 92. Jazakallah. <laughs> Hazur uh, 77, Manchester Share, or region? Hazur, uh, these are five regions. The uh, 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 north region, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama sallaita ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima inna ka hamid majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima inna ka hamid majid. An sahl ibn Sa'd the Sa'di yirzi Allahu anhu atan nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulun faqala ya rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dullani ala amalin idha amiltuhu ahabbani Allahu wa ahabbani annasu faqala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
ازحد فی الدنیا یحب قلہ فضحد فی ما فی عید الناس یحبوک جزاک اللہ جزاک اللہ جی نکائل احمد ترجمہ السلام علیکم The translation of the hadith just recited before you is as follows. A man came to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, direct me to an act which, if I do it, will cause Allah to love me and the people to love me. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, renounce the world and Allah will love you and renounce what the people possess. And the people will love you. Sunan Ibn Majah. Jazakallah. Acha Mahmoud Mahmoud. Tabas. Allah is Muslim. Allah is Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In the writings of the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wa salam, it states, When you stand up in prayer, It is necessary for you to have firm faith that your God has power over all things. Only then will your prayer be accepted, and you will behold the wonders of God's power that we have beheld. Our testimony is based on observation and not on hearsay. How should the supplication of a person be accepted, and how should he have the courage to pray at times of great difficulty, when, according to him, he is opposed by the law of nature? unless he believes that God has power over everything? O fortunate ones, follow not these practices. Your God is one who holds aloft innumerable stars, without the use of columns, and who has created heaven and earth from nothing. The English rendering of Noah's Ark, page 34. Jazakallah. Acha. Or Nasir Ahmad Abusu, Kwandu, Kunado, Nazm. السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وعلیکم السلام و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ کلام حضرت مسیم عود علیہ السلام وہ دیکھتا ہے غیروں سے کیوں دل لگاتے ہو جو کچھ بتوں میں پاتے ہو اس میں سورج پہ غور کر کی نہ پائی وہ روشنی جب چاند کو بھی دیکھا تو اس یار سا نہیں سب ہے رہ اسی میں کہ اسے لگاؤ دل دون دو اسی کو یارو بتوں میں وفا نہیں اس جائے پر عذاب سے کیوں دل لگاتے ہو دو زک ہائی مکام یہ بستان سرا نہیں وہ دیکھتا ہے غیروں سے کیوں دل لگاتے ہو جزاک اللہ جزاک اللہ دل دن اچھا ترجمہ منتہا احمد السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ The translation of the couplets recited before you is as follows. He watches. Why do you attach your hearts with strangers? What do you find in the idols that he does not have? We pondered over the sun but did not find that light. When we saw the moon, it too was not like the beloved. 
All good lies in attaching your heart with him. Pray seek only him, friends. There is no loyalty in the idols. Why do you attach your hearts with this place of torment? This place is like hell. It is not a home in a garden. Dura Samin, page number 186. Assalamu alaikum, Piyari Hazur. Wa alaikum assalam. My name is Ansar Farhan Arshad and I am from North East region. My question is Did the promised Messiah predict that a virus or plague would happen in the future, such as the current pandemic we are in? You see, it was prophesied by the promised Messiah, Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah Ta'ala has told him that there will be an outbreak of plague during his time, lifetime. And that happened. And apart from that, he has said that the world will have to face calamities in, in, in future. You will have to pass through. And you will face them. That can be in the form of, uh, in the shape of uh, pandemics, outbreak of pandemics or uh, earthquakes or any other type of uh, problem which uh, people will have to face. So he precisely did not say that after some time there will be an outbreak of uh, or a, a pandemic like COVID. But he said that if people did not realize their duties towards Allah, and if did not realize their duty towards their fellow being, and if they did not remember what is the purpose of their uh, coming into this world, then they will have to face some hardships in future. Right? So yes. we cannot say that he precisely said that this will happen at this time. But he said that you will have to pass through some uh, hardships in future because of your deeds, right? Okay. Jazakallah, Piyare Azur. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Hazur. My name is Ilyas Rahman, and I'm from Northeast region. Does Hazur think that the UK is now over the COVID crisis, or does Hazur think there will be another lockdown? <laughs> you see, at least at present, they say, the government claims that uh, they have now fully controlled the situation. And there are very few cases, only 30 or 25 or 30, 40 cases daily of the death toll of the people. It, it used to be very high in the, in the past, right? So they say because 46% of the population has been vaccinated, this is why now we are somehow confident that uh, we have overcome the situation. But nobody knows. Every day we see that new variants of the same COVID is, are coming up, or the, the new variants of the COVID are coming up, coming up, out, and uh, we cannot say that now, only okay, although, we can say now that they have controlled this, the present situation. But uh, as the world is facing, facing some other variants, you might also face some other variant. 
and that can also cause problem and uh, create a big, big havoc. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And if, if, if it happens, then there will be another lockdown, yes, obviously. Okay. Government will have to enforce another lockdown. Okay. Ah. Okay. Next. Right. Assalamu alaikum, Parazur. My name is Mutah Mahmood. I'm from Northeast region. My question is, your question is, is also, being the Khalifa of the... Your question is also about very, uh, COVID. Achha. Okay, your question is, what is your question? Is, uh, my question is, is being the Khalifa of the time a difficult responsibility? What is the most challenging aspect of being Khalifa? <laughs> you see, the work of the Khalifa is always challenging. Because uh, when you see that whatever you are doing, you are answerable direct to Allah Ta'ala for all your actions and for all your uh, responsibilities you are discharging, then if you have a fear of Allah, then every moment which uh, passes is uh, actually should uh, make you God-fearing. And that is a great challenge. Right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Jazakara Paris for your answer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dear Hazur, my name is Samar Ahmed Khan and I am from Darul Iman region. Piyare Hazur, my question is In this pandemic, life has changed due to staying at home and overall stress atmosphere has increased. We cannot go to the mosque, we can't attend any at the fall physical activities. Dear Hazur, how should we cope with this situation and will it improve? As long as the fear of COVID is, remains there, we cannot say that uh, you will be, you will uh, um, uh, involve yourself, your normal activities, or you can do your normal activities. So, because uh, as I have already told you, there is still a fear of a second variant or the, the recurrence of uh, the same COVID even. Although it is said that uh, those who have been vaccinated are secure and safe and they, have, they are immune to, but nobody is immune to this uh, type of pandemic. If your immunity develops in one type of virus, then another variant is coming. So, but at the same time, since you are sitting at home, you should change the pattern of your activities. Involve yourself in reading books. Now, this, your schools have been reopened, right? Mm -hmm. Now you are going to school. So at least the activities you were doing in sc schools have started now, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, now at least 50% or 70% of your frustration is gone or should go, right? Mm -hmm. yes. the, the remaining 25%, when you come home, you try to spend home, so you cannot go outside for to the playgrounds or do something. But most of the people nowadays do not go to the playgrounds. 
Eh? They, will, they would even, in, in normal days, they would sit in front of their TV and start playing or the iPad or iPhone hmm? eh? or a tablet. They would start playing games on the tablets. So the same thing you can do. But the best way of spending your time is that you should spend some time after completing your homework on the study, on reading the book of uh, the Prophet Islam or the Jamaati literature, right? Yes. So this is how you can increase your knowledge and wisdom, religious knowledge and knowledge, and increase your wisdom and increase your faith as well, right? So, otherwise, at present at least, you have already coped with the situation, 75% of the situation, eh? right, mm -hmm. by going to school. Had your question been, be almost three months ago, then there would have been a different situation. But now the situation has changed. Now you are enjoying your schools and go enjoy it. And when you come back home, don't try to bother your parents. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Zakhla for answering my question. Mm -hmm. Assalamu alaikum, Pyaar Azur. My name is Kashif Ahmed. I'm 15 years old and I'm from the Northeast region. You are 15 years old? Yes. Ma'am Ji. Acha? You look like 20 years old boy. Okay. Hazur, my question is what were the different ways uh, Hazur did the beard of his children when they were at the age of 15 and how did Hazur discipline them? I think. Uh, my children's mother played vital role in training them instead of my myself. Hmm? Right? So uh, the best way is that father should set their own example before the children. If fathers are offering five daily prayers, they can ask their children to offer five daily prayer. And offering five daily prayer is the best way to discipline your children, right? Then when the father is doing tilawat, reading of the Holy Quran daily, then people would know that their father is doing it, so we should also do it. And yet the, the, your, inside your house, the environment is good, yeah? and uh, you know, see, your your parents are living amicably. Hmm? There is no quarrel and shout or cry in, in your house. The children will also get a better lesson. So when you become father, you should try to follow these instructions. Right? Gucci. Okay. All right. Next. Jazakallah, Zul, for answering my question. Assalamu alaikum, Blavid Azur. My name is Yaqub Ahmed. My name is Yaqub Ahmed. Jacob Ahmed. Yes. Acha. I'm, uh, I'm 13 years old and I'm from Madara Laman region and I would like to ask you what are the qualities and the characteristics an exemplary Tivo should have? Also beloved Huzur, I would like to ask you after reading Abid Khan's diary, I wish to serve Huzur and the Jamaat. Which ways can I serve Huzur and Jamaat in the future? You see, an exemplary tifl 
should be very regular and punctual in offering five daily prayers, right? After the age of 10, it is an obligatory on you to offer five daily prayers. And if possible, in congregation, if you are living near the mosque, right? Then try to do tilawat, read the Holy Quran daily, even if it is one or two raku, or small portion of it, right? Then it more, an exemplary tifal should be morally very good, eh? well behaved. When you go to school, people should, students should know that this boy is very well behaved. So we have to be very careful in front of him. See, he, he is the person who does not uh, involve himself in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the bad things. Hmm? So we have to be very careful when we are coming in front of him. Right? When they talk to you, even if you use filthy language, you just avoid them and leave it. And you say that it is against my the teaching of my religion that I should reply you in the same language, right? And uh, you should be you should respect your teachers, right? You should obey your teachers. You should obey your parents, right? And always think that when whatever your parents think for you is for your betterment, right? And never think that uh, they are trying to um, um, you, you, you deprive you of your rights or they are not uh, caring you. Hmm? Your parents are always very much caring for their children, right? Well, apart from some very rare examples, normally they are very much caring, right? Yeah. And uh, if you think that they are caring, then you will obey them. So then, in this way, you will attain the love of your parents more than the normal love a child gets from their parents, right? Yes. So these are some tips. And be regular in doing your homework when you come back from school. And try also to read some religious literature to increase your religious knowledge, right? And uh, in this way, you will try yourself to, to make you a perfect tifl, right? And as the time goes on, you will increase your knowledge and wisdom and submission for the cause of the Jamaat. Eh? And in this way, you can serve the Jamaat and Khilafat in the best way. OK? Yes. All right. OK, Jazakallah for answering my answer. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Piyare Hazur. My name is Jahan Zib Khan. I'm 15 years old from Yorkshire region. My question is in the Quran, chapter 6, verse 160, Allah states, As for those who split up their religion and become divided into sects, thou hast no concern with them at all. Surely their case will come before Allah, then shall He inform them of what they used to do meaning that sects are forbidden. So why is Ahmadiyya a sect? 
You see, it was the prophecy of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu that uh, in the latter days, my Ummah will be divided into 72 sects. Okay? And each sect will think that uh, they are on the right path. They will have different point of views. And uh, each sect will think that their point of view is the best. And they are following the true teaching of the Quran. And they are following the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet. This is, see, in the present Muslim sects, there are some sects who are following Holy Quran. They do not, do not believe in Hadith. Some they are following Hadith and they give more preference to Hadith. And some other people have some different point of views. So, this prophecy has been fulfilled among Muslims as well. Although, in the past prophets' uh, communities, it, it, it happened in the same way. But among Muslims, it also happened. And now, the Holy Prophet also said, when this will happen, then at that time, a reformer will come who will follow my true teachings, who will guide you. And he will be called Messiah and Mahdi, the rightly, rightly guided person. And who, the person who is rightly guided will guide you on the same way. This is why the Prophet Muhammad we believe that that person whose advent was foretold by the Holy Prophet has come in the person of Hazmir Zaghulam Ahmed of Qadiyan. He said that Allah Ta'ala has appointed me as the Messiah and Mahdi of this age according to the prophecy of the Holy Prophet And now he has made it clear to me what are the right teachings. So I am also the person who will decide what is wrong and what is right. Eh? He is Hakam and other. He will have to make the decision according to the teaching of the Holy Quran and the Sunnah. This is why the Prophet Muhammad says that we have to give preference first to the Holy Quran, where all the teachings about the religions are given. Then we have to follow the Sunnah, what the Holy Prophet practiced. And then we should see the Ahadith which were collected almost 150 years later. And then see that how many of them are correct and are supporting the verses of the Holy Quran. Or the Holy Quran supports whatever they are saying. So then so he is the rightly guided Brahmin Messiah is the guy, rightly guided person who started this community according to the prophecy of the Holy Prophet and according to the prophecy of Allah Ta'ala Himself. Because in Surah Juma, Allah Ta'ala says that the community will uh, be established and uh, on the footsteps of the same community which the Holy Prophet has established, right? So this our sect is the, that sect whose commencement was prophesied by the Holy Prophet himself and the Holy Quran itself. And 
he, the person who was to come in the later days was to bring all the different sects of Muslim, all the different Muslim sects on one hand. This is why he is called Mahdi. So here the situation is different. All those sects which were established or developed, they were following different school of thoughts according to the teaching of Quran and Hadith and this and that. But here, this sect, Ahmadiyya sect, was established according to the prophecy of the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet This is why we cannot say that uh, Jamaat Ahmadiyya is the same sect as the other normal sects in Islam. They were the sects which were developed because of the deviation in their school of thoughts. This and the promised Messiah who was to come has come to join them together, to bring them together so that it, he forms a one sect and that is Jamaat Ahmadiyya and that is according to the prophecy of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Right? Okay? Clear or not? Yeah. Yeah, if, if not, Allah. if not, then you can write it to me again. Okay, Jazakallah. Okay. Yeah, right, sir. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Piyari Azwar. My name is Zeeshan Ahmed. I'm 15 years old and I'm from Scotland region. Azwar, my question is, how do you spend your time during Eid day? You see, before Eid prayer, you know, normally I spend some time to prepare my khutbah, right? And after Eid, then I come home, see my children, my family members. Hmm? And also I do call some of uh, my friends, my relatives, and say Eid Mubarak or receive calls from them for Eid Mubarak. And then normally I go to come to my office and start working again. Eh? Then Zohar prayer. And then after Zohar prayer, then uh, we I take lunch with my family members. And then after that, my routine work starts again as I am spending on the, on the normal days. So there is not much difference apart from that. On the eight days I received, I received uh, Eid Mubarak calls from different people. And also at the same time, I sit together with my family member for some time, for one hour, and take my lunch with them. Okay. Zakla Pierre Hazur for your answer. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Pierre Hazur. My name is Zan Shakil. I am 13 years old and I am from West Midlands region. Hazur, my question is when a person passes away, is he able to meet up with his parents or loved ones who have also passed away? Yes, if a person has done good deeds and uh, he is going to paradise, he will see his, all those loved ones who have gone to paradise. And also at the same time, those loved ones who have done good things and they are in paradise, they will also see him there. But uh, if a person who dies has not done good deeds, then if he has gone to hell, how can he see the person who are those souls who are in paradise? So we should try to do good deeds and follow the footstep of our um, our loved ones 
who have done good things, so that when we go after death, when our soul goes to heaven or to skies, it should go to the heaven, not in the hell, right? It all depends on your deeds. Okay? Ji. Jazakallah for answering my question. Okay. Beloved Huzur, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Nishan Ahmad Ramjit from Northwest Region. My question is, how can we focus in class when there's a lot of distraction and students are messing about a lot? Are you from Mauritius? Yes. <laughs> Achha. Your parents are from Mauritius. Yeah. See, then you ask your teacher that discipline your class. First thing is, <laughs> if, if your, your, your class teacher is teaching you and the, the students are joking and creating mischief, then you should ask your teacher that try to discipline them because we cannot understand when students are behaving like this, right? But at the same time, you try to sit on the front seats. Ask your, your teacher that uh, those uh, back, back benchers are creating mischief and doing jokes and all those things, and it distracts my concentration on your lecture and what you are teaching. So please give me seat on the front row. So when you get the seat on the front row, you can get, you can have better concentration on your, the, on your studies and the lecture the teacher is giving you or the, whatever he is teaching you. Right? Right? Yes, yes sir. Change your seat then. Don't sit with the students who are creating mischief and uh, joking all the time those who are not serious in their studies, right? Yes, just like allow you answering my question. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Pierre Hazur. My name is Umer Sharwani, and I'm from Yorkshire region. My question is, Hindus pray to idols so that their gods answer their prayers. In Islam, it is said that unless you send durood unto the Holy Prophet وسلم, then your prayers remain in the sky and Allah will not accept your prayer. How do we differ from the two? You see, Hindus uh, have made different gods for different things, right? And uh, they believe that uh, their prayers are only heard and listened when we pray to Allah through these idols. Or sometimes they believe that if only we pray to the idols, they will listen to our prayers and uh, whatever we want will be achieved. But in the case of Durud Sharif, it is a different situation. Allah Ta'ala says that the Holy Prophet وسلم, is a human being. And he is the person whom I love more than anything, any person in the world, right? And he has brought you the final Sharia, the final law from Allah Ta'ala, which contains all the necessary things. And this is also a blessing of the Holy Prophet Wasallam, or the blessing of Allah Ta'ala through the Holy Prophet Wasallam on us. So he says that uh, you have to be, if you want to be, you, a person should be grateful to the person who has uh, given you something good, 
right? Right? Yeah. So this is why Allah Ta'ala says that uh, you should pray to Allah Ta'ala and uh, be grateful to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he has brought you such a religion. And uh, the best way to show your gratitude is that uh, you say Dhruv Sharif and Allah Ta'ala says, since this person is the person whom I love more than anyone, any prophet, so when you say the root to him, then I will listen to your prayers as well. But at the same time, Allah says that you should talk to me directly. Not that whenever you are talking, you will always say that, uh, that uh, Allah, you don't think that Allah Ta'ala is not listening to you. You can directly talk to him, but at the same time, say the root to him, to just to show your love and uh, show the, yeah, the gratitude. Uh, I mean, you have the two, and you, you have for the Holy Prophet Sallallahu You see in Jamai last yesterday's sermon, did you listen to my sermon yesterday? Yeah. Listen? Yes. Did you? You listen to it again. And that explains the importance of the truth. Eh? Allah Ta'ala says that you send truth to the Holy Prophet but don't think that he is something supernatural. He is also a human being. But Hindu or, Hindus or other idol worshippers, they think their idols are something which uh, can convey their message. Even they have, you see, made so many idols with the wooden uh, material or some clay or some other things. So how can a thing which you yourself have made be the 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 messenger or the the of your of your uh, prayers or the person who or the, th or the thing who can convey your message to Allah Taala? Here, Allah Taala did not say that when you are saying saying the root, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will convey your message. Allah Taala says that since I love this person. When you praise him, then I will accept your prayers because you also love my the person whom I love. Eh? So you see, in the in the world, even if we, we can say, if you know, if your parents see that a person love their children more than anyone else, they would like him and accept his, uh, and uh, make him a friend. So in the same way, Allah Ta'ala says that I will listen to you directly, whatever you are saying, but if you love my prophet, whom I love more than anyone, anyone else, then I will listen to your prayers more than any other prayer which passes through him, uh, which uh, which are which passes through the, the uh, not through him, which are which which comes to me through the truth or praise of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the difference. We do not say that these are the idols or the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conveys our message. We can say we say Allah Taala is listening us directly. But at the same time, he asks us to praise the Holy Prophet because I love him. Right? This is the love. This is not the, they are, he, is, he is not the person who is conveying your message to Allah Ta'ala. 
but the Hindus and other idol worshippers believe that their idols are conveying their message to Allah Ta'ala. So they are making them the means and source of conveying the message. Here, in the situation of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu he is not considered to be the means and source of conveying the message. Right? Yes. Okay. Exactly. If it is not clear, exactly. then right. Clear, then right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Five minutes left. Assalamu alaikum, Pyare Hazur. Mera naam Shari Bahmad hai, or mein tera saal ka hoon. Or mera region North East hai. Or mera sual ye hai, ke hum dousron ko apni jamaat ki taraf kaise la sakte hain. Tum Pakistan se aaye ho? Ji. Kab aaye the? Teen saal pehle. Teen saal pehle. तुम अपने लोगों को इस तरह ला सकते हो कि उनको तुम्हारा अच्छा कैरेक्टर हो, अच्छा बिहेवियर हो, अच्छा बिहेव करने वाले हो, तो तुम्हारे स्टूडेंट अगर तुम अपने 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 माहौल में देखो, अपने एनवायरनमेंट में देखो, अपने तो तुम्हें जो तुम्हारे स्टूडेंट हैं वो तुम्हें देखेंगे कि ये जिसने पहले मैंने जवाब दिया था कि अच्छा बिहेव करने वाला है इसी तरह जो हमारे बड़े हैं वो अगर अपने इस्लाम की सही तालीम लोगों को बताएं और खुद उनके अंदर से जाहिर हो रही हो इस्लाम की तालीम कि इस्लाम पूरा मन मज़ब है इस्लाम में लड़ाइयाँ जायज़ नहीं हैं इस्लाम किसी के हक नहीं मारता तो लोग तुम्हारी तरफ रिट्रैक्ट होंगे और जब रिट्रैक्ट होंगे कि इसका बिहेवियर अच्छा है तो फिर वो खुद बहुत तुम्हारे तालीम के बारे में पूछेंगे यू सी फर्स्ट थिंग इज योर बिहेवियर इफ योर बिहेवियर इज गुड पीपल विल बी विल बी अट्रैक्टेड और विल विल गेट अट्रैक्टेड टूवर्ड्स यू राइट and in this way you can make more friends when you will make more friends they will ask you why you are different from others then you can tell them because i follow the true teaching of islam so then they will ask you the questions about islam and in this way you can convey the message of islam in the same way our elders should also set their examples and uh, if they are well behaved, they are not uh, usurping the rights of others, they are morally good, then people will get attracted towards them. And then when they will be in contact with those Ahmadis, they will ask them, why you are different from others? So in this way, they can open the avenues of tabligh and uh, in this way we can convey the message of islam so the best way is to set your examples before the people then people will get attracted right okay chalo fir raza aapka waqt bhi khatam ho gaya ab हाँ कितने क्वेश्चन बाकी रह गए सवाल तो काफी है लेकिन हजूर वो जायद रखे हुए थे पहले पिछले पहलों से ज्यादा कर लिया सवाल वैसे आज इन्होंने जी हजूर बिल्कुल सवाल काफी थे अब क्या हो गया उनको हजूर वो जायद रखे हुए थे ताकि अगर हजूर के पास वक्त हो तो क्या अच्छा नहीं चलो ये तो वक्त खत्म हो गया घंटा से हो गया तकरीबन तो बाकी आंदा कौन है और किसका सवाल है आखिरी सवाल किसने करना है एक सवाल करना तो कर लो अस्सलाम वालेकुम रहमतुल्लाहि व बरकातहू प्यारे हुजूर वालेकुम सलाम 
میرا نام مومن گوندل ہے اور میں چودہ سال کا ہوں میرا ریجن نارتھ ویسٹ ہے پیارے حضور میرا سوال ہے کہ میری عمر میں روزے فرض نہیں ہے تو میں اپنے کلاس میں ساتھیوں کو کیسے سمجھاؤں کہ میں روزہ کیوں نہیں رکھتا تم پاکستان سے آئے تھے نہیں پاکستان سے نہیں ہوں میں میں لنڈن میں پیدا ہوں اچھا بڑی اچھی اردو میرے ابو پاکستان سے ہیں بڑی اچھی اردو بولتے ہو جزاک اللہ یو سی بیکاز یو آر یو آر لیس دین ففٹین جی سو دس ایج یو سی روزہ از آبلیگیٹری آن اے میچیور پرسن ایٹ دی ایج آف سیونٹین ایٹین رائٹ سو اف یو آر ناٹ میچیور اینڈ دس ایج از یو نو دی ایج آف نرشمنٹ یو آر گروئنگ سو یو کین ٹیل دیم بیکاز آف دس اللہ تعالیٰ سیڈ دیٹ دے پرسن از فل گرون دین یو شوڈ ڈو فاسٹ بیکاز اٹ مے ہینڈر یور نرشمنٹ یور گروتھ رائٹ and at the same time mm-hmm. if you are studying and you are passing through your exams then it can overburden you or then you will not feel easy so this is why allah says that if you for some reasons you could you cannot uh, keep fast then you can complete them later on so the 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 rozas and the fasting is only obligatory on those who are mature and uh, have attained the age of 17 18 and now there is no growth issue with them right nor the okay. physical body growth issue not brain development issue اوکے جی ٹھیک ہے جزاک اللہ کہ آپ نے میرا سوال کا جواب دیا چلو پھر اللہ حافظ چلو اللہ حافظ السلام علیکم